Hey. Hey there. Hey everyone. How's everybody doing tonight? Now, uh, Mish, correct me if I'm wrong, but if people want to be entered into the giveaway tonight, I think they have to actually say something in chat. Like even if they just type a G or something like that. Is that true? <laughs> okay, so tonight, today's project or tonight's project are these lovely, lovely, lovely seashells that I made. I'm going to uh, show you how to do two versions. One version where it's totally filled in um, with white uh, pearl and another version where um, it's kind of mottled and, and more natural looking. And what I'm going to be using tonight, let me move everything aside, are some great impression cutters from um, Mary Joy Coleman's O oh Joy Creations. It's a little bit dirty. She doesn't send them to you dirty. On Tarsi's blend angles. Uh, specifically, I'm going to use the mini blend angles. So this is a, a set that Jen makes, um, and it's designed to help you create blends that are the width of your uh, pasta machine. So, if you wanted to make a large blend, you would use, and you have a 150 Atlas machine, you would use this triangle here to cut your triangles for a Skinner blend. If you have a 180 like I have, then you'd use this larger triangle. But you can also, he also has templates for you to make mini blends. Um, and so uh, this is for the 150. And what you would do if you wanted to make, um, you know, a, a mini blend um, is you would use uh, three full triangles and then two half triangles and that would go across the width of a 150. Tonight I am going to use or I did use actually um, this triangle and this is um, this is so that you can have um, a blend that fits the width of the 180 and <clears throat> these are these are great tools I, I I'm always trying to explain to people how much easier it is to get a nice blend if it goes across the whole length of your machine. Nice and nice and even. So the first thing I'm going to show you, oh, Jan also includes um, a little piece of uh, like a, a plastic cutting board that I think he says he gets them from Dollar Tree. Mm -hmm. Hey, blend angles. Hey, Frank. <gasps> Frank is a two o'clock Friday person. Thanks for showing up tonight, Frank. <laughs> and Jan, um, feel free to comment if I'm saying something wrong or do I, you know, I, I've used these a lot. Um, it's very easy to teach people how to make a, a Skinner blend with these. One night I'll have to make a large blend and show people how to use it with the with the uh, the larger triangles. But I will say that I use the small triangle an awful lot. And again, I have a 180. So of the two smaller triangles, I'm using um, the larger one. So I'm just going to start by showing you, you know, just how you cut them out. This is some um, mica clay. It's it's a blend at this point. Um, because I had lots of scrap left over. 
And uh, <laughs> it's world's at the thickest setting. I have it at the thickest setting. And uh, what Jan uses, and it, it actually works very well, is a needle tool. You could, if you wanted to, you know, use your craft blade, your scal scalpel blade to do this. But this worked pretty well. And I'm just making sure. Hello. Hey, Donna. So, you know, if you use um, the needle tool, then you don't have to worry that you're going to uh, scratch your template. My only complaint about all of these templates that various folks make is um, <laughs> they hide in plain sight. You know what I mean? You're like, where did that go? I just had it. And um, if you want to clean these, I, I just use a dry paper towel to clean them off. Um, don't put any alcohol on them. That's that's not a good idea. Just wipe it off with a rag or a paper towel. So it's pretty easy to go ahead and, and just cut out some triangles. Now, again, I'm using um, an Atlas 180. But the length of my rollers is 180 centimeters, I think. So that means I needed four triangles plus half triangles. So I'm not going to put these all together yet. I'm just going to show you pretty much how you would do it. All right, and then you would put your half triangles on the end in order to make um, in order to make a uh, a rectangle and if these were all put together they're the exact length of my pasta machine and it's just uh, it's just a much better way to make to make a blend I, I if if the clay doesn't run the length of the pasta machine um, that's when you sometimes start to get really wonky uneven blends if it runs the length of the pasta machine it, it stays uh, it's just a, a much nicer, even, even blend. So even if I think I don't need a blend that's as wide as my pasta machine, um, I still use these and I still make it the length of my pasta machine. And then I cut off what I don't need and save it for something else. It's a, a really, these are ingenious little things. Okay. But for me, um, I wanted, let me just show you this. I wanted a more stripey blend. You know, I wanted a really stripey blend like this. Hey, Deborah. Hey, Deb. Deb's such a sweetie. What did what did you what did you have fun with, Mish? <laughs> Running my mouth here, Mish. <laughs> okay, so I wanted a more stripey blend. So I still use the templates, but what I did is I cut each triangle in half. I'm making sure I'm on screen. I'm going to put this aside here for a minute. Now, I'm putting these right next to each other like this because it's easy to get. I was calling it shape dyslexia. I'm going to cut this in half. It doesn't have to be perfect. And cut this one in half. And then I'm going to switch. I'm going to put you here and you here. Okay, so the, so that counts as two, two triangles. And then I'm going to do that again. We'll put these over here. All right, so there's triangle one, triangle two, full triangle. Put those together. Forgive me, my arms are out a little bit further than they, you know, further away from my body than they usually are. So I.
<laughs> okay. <laughs> Keep, keeps them out of trouble. Keeps them off the streets. I'm always trying to keep Misha off the streets. All right. And so now I'll, that's a full triangle two. I'm sorry, three and full triangle four. Now, if I were using the template that's made uh, for the 150, I would only need three full triangles. Okay. Let's... Okay. Well, I'm glad Jan is here. <laughs> that, that, we'll have to put that on the stream checklist. That will you you have to if we're using somebody's products, you have to talk to them and learn how to mimic their voice. Now this is again I'm going to get. So if I wanted a lot of pure color, a lot of this pure like sort of turquoise that I made up, then I would put a piece of turquoise there. But like I said, I want this kind of stripey blend. And so I am see that you get you get kind of dyslexic with it. You're like how does that go? Flipping it around. Okay, so there's basically what I'm going to use for a blend. Now, if you go to Jan's um, uh, Blend Angles Facebook page, he has um, in the photo section, he has um, a little mini tutorial to do this really pretty rainbow blend. And I'm pretty sure there he shows you um, that what he does um, oftentimes is he does this whole setup again and then flips it on top of of the of, of this blend the first blend that he made um, and then um, it's just really kind of cool your your blend doesn't fall apart when you try to pick it up <laughs> um, I don't really need that much clay for this and to be honest with you like everybody else I'm having trouble getting clay um, in a timely manner at least so I'm going to use another trick that I saw Jan do. I'm going to um, roll out a piece of translucent and put it right across this this blend like a like a piece of scotch tape almost. So forgive me, I'm going to have to turn the machine on. So while you do that, I'll go ahead and is that better for you, Mary Joy? I just noticed I had been muted. And Jan, Jan saying, oh, you don't want to hear my nasal twang. I said, it's okay. I've got that whiny thing going on, so we cancel each other out. Um, and Jessica say, I'm wondering that too, Joy. So hopefully if that's better audio, let me know, guys. All right. Did you have yourself muted? Yeah, so the, the tablet disconnected oh. from my, my deck server. So oh. so Tragedy. So I like to... Um, Actually, I think Jan just puts one strip across the middle. Um, I like to put more than that because I like to really make sure it doesn't fall apart on me. Okay, and I'm just going to trim that. So that's what that makes me think of is just like I'm just scotch taping the whole blend <laughs> together. Let me put my, I'm going to bring my pasta machine closer. And what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to bring this blend down to um, the uh, medium setting on my pasta machine. Now, usually this doesn't. Everybody tells me that these LED lights don't produce heat, but I think they do. Because one of the neat things about this cutting board is um, that he includes. Do you still include that, Jen, before I tell everybody? <laughs> But anyways, the clay doesn't stick to it. The clay doesn't stick to it. Okay, so now obviously this is um, this is short, right? I, I, I can't fold that up 
and put it through the machine. I, I can't keep doing that. So I'm going to bring this down to the medium setting of my pasta machine. My pasta machine technically starts at zero and goes, um, that's the thickest setting and it goes to nine. I never use zero. I just use one, one through nine. Um, I've been told that it can damage the machine to use zero. I don't know if that's true. So forgive me again. I am going to I am going to turn the machine on. Oh, and one thing that I always like to mention to people, uh, when you put the blend through the machine, you you want to make sure that all of these cut colors are touching the roller. You know, it's I hold it by the four corners so that it goes through. You don't want to go through this way or this way or this or anything like that. You want to make sure um, that all the colors are touching the rollers. Just sticking that together a little bit more. Okay. Oh, Chad's right. confirming, yes, you do get a piece of plastic mat with your blend angle set. Oh, good. Good. It's, it's, it's really neat. Like I said, it's it's a little bit frosted, so the fl the clay the clay doesn't get all stuck on there on you. Um, like I said, this this tent gets a little bit hot. All right, so I'm turning the machine on. All right, so that's the medium setting. And so now I have enough to fold over and work with. Um, and the, the other advantage of, see, I didn't, I didn't touch, I didn't do what I told you guys to do. This guy wasn't touching the rollers. <laughs> but, um, the other advantage of, of this is if you go down on the medium setting, um, it will blend um, quicker. So now I'm going to fold it over, and when you fold it over, you want to make sure that your sides match up. You don't want to accidentally sort of cant it, you know, this way, so a little bit of that clay is hanging out, or cant it that way, so a little bit of that clay is hanging out. You want to keep your sides even. So, but like. See how that's hanging out a little bit there? You don't want that. You want them to be nice and even. So I'll fix that up. There we go. As you know, you can see it's starting to blend up. So you can see, you know, it happens pretty quickly. And, um, you know, how much you blend it is sort of up to you. Um, I would definitely blend more than this. This is actually what I wound up with. <laughs> I'll put that back down there. I'll finish that blend later. I really wanted to make sure I got through everything, so I did something um something called a cooking show format <laughs> where I get each stage of the product project kind of done for you guys because I've been having trouble getting finished. In 90 minutes, it's taking me more than 90 minutes to show things. So so I really liked that kind of stripey blend. Oh, you back me? Okay. Did I miss any questions? Okay. All right. Uh, let me see. No, no questions, but Julie Caswell says, finally found the chat box, unavailable in mobile mode. Need, need oh. full sight. That sucks. And oh, I didn't know that. Brian says, 
Do you get a list of names for the drawings from the comment section? No, what I'm going to do, Jan, is just have people say yes in channel. And then I have a little thing that I'll cut and paste all those people into and we'll pull a drawing live. And we're then... gonna... Go for it, sweetie. Uh, we, we're going to do that at the end of the stream, Jan. Do, do you um, need for us to do that earlier? Okay. He'll let us. He'll he'll let us know. So. Oh yeah. I like this. I like this kind of. So this is not perfectly blended, but I liked this uh, stripiness of of this blend, and I I like the scale of it for the project. Right. I want to be able to show a couple of those stripes, um, in the piece. So, this is uh, again. This is at the medium setting. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it up to the thickest setting. So I folded it in half and I'm going to go through number three. All right, so I brought that back up to the thickest setting, and the reason um, the reason why I, I want it on the thickest setting is because this is a project that takes some sanding, <laughs> and there were let me see if I can find my my problem child. There were more than here we go. So with this one, as I was sanding off. Um, you know, the white clay. I sanded off the entire the entire blend. <laughs> it was very disappointing. <laughs> so you have to have um, the you know the the blend layer. You want that to be pretty thick. Now, the other reason why you want it to be thick is because you want to get a good impression. Um, you know, this is a pretty deep cutter. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do one with a very deep impression and then one with a more shallow depression in it. Um, so let's start with let's start with a, a really, really thick one. So I, you, at this point too, you can kind of decide which way you want the stripes oriented. <clears throat> do you want them to be oriented horizontally or do you want them to be oriented um, vertically? I like the horizontal because, um, you know, after we fill it in and sand it, you still want to be able to see that gradient. All right, so I'm going to cut a piece of this off. I want to make sure I can get two out of this. All right, so I'm going to cut it right about here. There we go. And I have another piece of clay here, and that's on on the also on the thickest setting. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place my blend on top of that. And so the way I do that without getting a whole bunch of air bubbles is say I just put the edge down and then I just keep going straight straight across with my finger till I get to the end. All right, so now you can see I'm not I'm not going to sand that off. It's not likely. If 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 I did, I'd be sanding through to China or something like that. All right, now, 
what I have here is um, a knee-high stocking clean. I never wore it. <laughs> Filled with cornstarch. And I'm going to very, very liberally dust this cutter. You could also uh, spray some water in there. Or um, I don't um, always show water because I know it's a problem with FEMO. It makes FEMO go crazy. Um, or you could um, use some Amaral in there, I think. But the cornstarch worked pretty good. So I think that I want the light to be down the end. So I'm going to press this cutter all the way all the way in there and then I'm gonna roll over it pull the cutter up and if it doesn't cut all the way through don't get too crazy about it you can do just what I showed you before Jan's trick of using a needle tool. I want to just get I got a little a little piece of unwanted clay there. You can come around it with a needle tool. Or you could cut around it with um, a blade or a scalpel. Now you want to save that. I got, it looks like I gotta do this side too. And, and just because I'm live and on camera, I've got a smutty piece of clay booger. Now, usually what I do at this point is if there's little bits on the side, I might do some more trimming on this. But you can kind of push them to the back. Um, we are going to do a lot of um, sanding, but, you know, I don't want to have to sand off a lot of defects on the side here. Um, you know, I say the same thing all the time. I say it when I do videos and when I do lives and when I, you know, teach in person. If it doesn't look good now, it's not going to, you know, nothing magic happens in the oven. You know, so the more you do to it before you put it into the oven, the more you clean it up, uh, the less work you have to do. You know, I hear that people hate sanding, and I guess I understand why, but um, you, can, you can cut down a lot on sanding. If you do it right the first time. So you can see just looking at this, right, how great it is to be able to make, you know, to be able to use the tool to make, um, you know, a, a blend that's the right scale for your project. There's a... Um, I really like the... Um, Jen, was a passion for polymer? Go ahead. Frank just said clay burgers, but no bark poop. I'm sorry, I was busy editing names and I don't know the <laughs> context, but it's a great friggin' line. So uh, when uh, Amy K, go for it, sweetie. Go ahead. Oh, uh, so when Amy K K Hux makes bark, um, you know she makes polymer clay bark. She um, she says that she gets uh, she makes she makes clay poop, <laughs> bark poop, <laughs> clay poop, bark. So that's kind of the thicker one with the deeper impression. I'm gonna put that aside for a second. 
Um, and Julie Criswell says she loves the shell cutters and the blend angle templates. And Deborah gave oh. me, I've used my shell cutters, my shell a couple of times already. Great. There, I, I really, I'm really enjoying this. Uh, so, um, what I'm going to do with this is, is called backfilling. And, um, I mean, I've backfilled things before, but what gave me the idea this time is uh, Ginger Davis Almond um, of the Blue Bottle Tree. And if you don't know that site, get over there. It's a great site. But she has um, a private Facebook group that you can join called Polymer Clay Success. And so she's been running little challenges on there. And the challenge um, was to try backfilling. That was the challenge. Now, the other thing I kind of wanted to warn you guys about today was um, this This uh, today is really about the, the techniques. I might not get to the point where we do the back. So... Now, this sheet of clay has been rolled out at the medium setting. And so this is how you make the, the more. Actually, I want to put it this way because I want that to be not seen. Also, Mary, we like the depth of the cutters. When you're doing backfilling like this, it actually is pretty helpful. Yeah. And it is. Julie also says, how pretty that blend looks with the shell design. Yeah, I used a lot. I mean, throughout um, throughout this live, you'll see a bunch of different blends that I used. I, I really liked this blend, too. <laughs> this was, um, I guess it's a Primo Accents. I think it's just pink. It might be fuchsia. Um, and then I took some pearl clay and mixed it with uh, some cad yellow to make a yellow and so then it you know it blended into um, an orangey orangey color orangey glass da, da, da. so that's a more subtle look to it um, you know that's less subtle and then uh, I'm going to show you this one that um, Mish doesn't like this one <laughs> Because he says it looks like I just spray painted. <laughs> but I didn't blend that one as much either. And I'm not. my problem with this is that um, I used uh, purple and pearl and then I filled it with pearl. So I, I, I just think there's not enough contrast with it. All right. So now we have um, the blend is on the thickest setting. And uh, the backing clay here is on the medium setting. Because we all know that usually that's all I do. So again, I'm going to very, very liberally. <laughs> it's not the time to be a conservative when you're doing this. Be, be liberal. Not in your politics necessarily, but in your application of cornstarch or corn flour if you're from other parts of the world. So this one, I'm going to have it be dark down at the bottom. And again, I'm just going to push it in there as hard as I can. I guess you could wiggle it around a little bit and roll over it. Pull it up. And that's a... Uh, hold on, I need to get a blade here. I'm sorry. That's a much more shallow depression because there just wasn't as much clay to um, push up into the cutter. And if it's very thin like this, you know, if I've got kind of clay crumbs that are very thin, lots of times what I'll do is I'll just push them to the back. But again, I think I'll go ahead on this one. When you trim like this, you want to keep your blade straight up and down. I'm going to do something else to make this easier on myself. I'm putting it on a piece of paper. I've got the blade straight up and down. And then what you can do is you can move the paper rather than trying to move your, your blade. 
And that so, makes it less... So I'm Julie, K- Julie Crespo was saying, I love them means I'd love to have them in my arsenal. The um, The cutters? I believe the cutters, yes. All right. I will kick the list out again in a few minutes, folks. And if there's new people or make sure, or if you just decide you want to take a chance and get, get on it, we'll add you to it. So um, we're going to, did we decide, it, um, is it okay to do it at the end of the stream? Yeah, yeah. Jan said he, he didn't have to rush off and it was okay. And Jan, what I think we'll do is once your winner is selected and we have the name, um, it's uh, you two guys, are, 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 we'll kick the name out, and then you two guys connect and do all the froth for all. <laughs> so if you put the little ad up that I made for Jan. Um, it's already been up once, but I'll put it up again. Okay. See, I okay. my job. I got more buttons going than anybody right now. <laughs> Misha's got like a command center in there, <laughs> in the other room. So what we're going to do, or what you do for this technique, is you would go ahead and cure these. You you know, you, you bake them. And then you, then you fill them with clay. So, you know, with raw clay. So when you add raw clay to baked clay, Usually what you do is you use, um, excuse me, you use um, some liquid clay or something to help it bond. But that's very difficult <laughs> on this, right? You wind up getting liquid clay everywhere. Um, and if you don't do it, let me get my problem child out here again. If oh, you this, don't. Is this the, the uh, airbrushed one? No, this is the other one. Okay. Okay. <sighs> If you don't, um, you know, take some sort of measure, sometimes the clay that you backfilled, let's see if people can see this, sometimes the clay that you backfilled pops out, and then you have to, you know, do it again. Um, and, of course, it never pops out like when you're on the first grid of sanding. <laughs> it pops out like at the last grid, you know, so you you really wind up having to go back to the drawing board. So, um what I did is I took a little ball tool and I textured in all of the depressions because what that does is it gives the raw clay, um, you know, I'm going to push raw clay in there and it's going to give the raw clay, um, you know, some place to go and it sticks in there much better. So, Deborah Gabriel, you know that embroidery scissors work to cut after baking. And Linda Jo Poy just got in and says thanks for this. Well, you're more than welcome. You're more than welcome. We enjoy this. So this is doing two things. It's going to give, um, you know, the raw clay a place to adhere to. Um, and it also deepens the impression a little bit. Not so much of this big piece over here, but you'll see when I do these pieces here, it sort of makes them deeper. And when you do this and you get to the point where you're sanding, be gentle and be careful with this area over here because it's very easy to sand off the white. Now I can go back in if I want and put more white on there. Um, but then I couldn't show you the mistake. <laughs> I got to show you the mistakes. So it's kind of, you know, um, you know, it's a little bit time consuming to do this. But, you know, it's, it's worth it if you don't have clay fall out. And just... Poking and the ball tools this size. <laughs> I don't know the size. I really should have looked that up. This one's going to be in my best Boston accent. This one's going to be wicked pretty. 
I have to stream, I'll get to bake this up. There we go, All right? So that's the deeper one. And for this one that's more shallow, I'm going to do the same thing. But when I get to the point where I sand it, that texturing is going to partially show through. And I, I really like that look, especially on this one. So that's how I did it. Um, didn't really backfill the shape so much as I backfilled the um, the texture. Oh, this is the big one. I meant to do the small one. And so for these really shallow ones, I really went to town with uh, with the texturing. Now, another thing I'm going to try is, um, I haven't done it yet, but I kind of like it just like, like that, too. I, I wondered what it would look like if, um, you know, I baked it just like that, cleaned up my sides, and then either just put liquid clay or um, resin or something just over this texture. Now, if I'm boring the heck out of you here, let me know. But I've gotten requests to really, really show details. So that's... That's what I'm doing. Actually, this is, this is really shallow. It's, um, <laughs> I saw somebody the other day in a group, you know, ask people, you know, what they like in a tutorial. Do they want just a PDF or, you know, do they want a video? Do they uh, want one long video or, you know, several shorter videos? And um, it's always interesting to me to read what people say. <laughs> and the then try to figure out if I do any of those things. <laughs> like one lady was saying, yeah, I hate it when they have, you know, all the supplies in front of them and then they talk for 20 minutes before they do anything. And, um, you know, other people were saying, uh, you know, they don't like short videos because they lose the links. And It, it just amazes me. I try to give it, you know, I, I try. My first my first video I made, I, I didn't um, do a PDF for it, but, but I've been doing PDFs for my videos now. So Jessica's not bored. She's amused. Of course, I, I'm running a 70s commentary while you're talking over here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We're trying to explain yeah. to Jessica just what the 70s was. Shermed <laughs> um, says, "Hey, hey, the '70s, yeah. Burt Reynolds." <laughs> <laughs> yes, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's what you asked me about the '70s, and I think Burt Reynolds. Um, all right. So now, what you do is you get those into the oven which I will do later on. But that's what they look like when they're all textured. And I think there's, you know, there's something interesting with just that. But I haven't done it yet. Give me time. Give me time. Give me time. All right. So now, this one's already done. I thought I had another one. 
Yep. Here we you're, go. You're exactly right, Sharon. Ed. We survived the 70s. <laughs> there would be some that would never have taken that bet with me. <laughs> so now I have uh, one here that's pretty deep and one that's shallow. And to fill them in is pretty much the same, the same method. So I have some of the pearl white clay and dusting that a little bit. And I'm just going to stick that right into that clay because I just want that impression. We actually could use this one twice. It doesn't matter. Now, what I'm going to do here is a little bit time consuming, but it's what I found worked the best. Now, in this depression here, you could probably get some liquid clay in there without too much trouble. In these larger stripes, you could get some liquid clay in there. But with that texturing, you don't, you don't really need it. And now, again, you're going to use either a blade or a needle tool. Um, and I'm just going to go right around this shape. And I think I said this is at the thickest setting. And put it in there. And press it down. And then you can use either a blade. Or this is a, a clay rib or a clay scraper. Usually I use one that doesn't have all these sharp points on it, and I can't find it. I've been using it for days making these, and now I can't find it. And I'm not going to try to get all the excess off all at once. I'm just going to take a little at a time. If you try to, you know, if you dig down in there with it to try to take it all off at once, um, what happens is, is it pops out. It pops out on you. So I'm just going to get most of that off. What are we saying about the 70s? Are we still talking about the 70s? Well, there's a few of us who had babies in the 70s. I didn't have any babies in the 70s. <laughs> um, we're, we're doing the drawing names, so that's going on. Let me catch up okay. here. You know, me, like I said, the 70s for me were... Uh, were a blast. <laughs> I, I don't remember many much of it, but it was in general a blast. So Mishi's from California. He's a big 1970s California hippie dude. <laughs> yeah, um, hippie. <laughs> so so, so Sherman is asking, what is this tool? And I'm not... So this is a needle tool, needle tool right here. That's what that's called. Um, this is a scalpel tool or craft knife. And this is called a clay rib. Um, and usually I use one that's flat on this side and, and it doesn't have all these little points on it. So it's called a clay rib. And they come in different sizes. And I... Um, I, I use them a lot. I use them a lot when I fill a mold too. I use them to scrape the excess off when I, when I fill a mold because they won't cut the mold. Um, and, and they're really thin too. Uh, so this one goes this way. So it seems like it's kind of a pain in the neck to do each of these pieces one at a time like this. But, you know, when I tried to do just sheets of clay, it was very, very difficult. 
to get the excess off and then I was sanding for forever um, once they were all baked. What time? I was just about to tell you, sweetie. We are 57 minutes into the stream, and what I'm thinking is at 10 minutes, an hour and 10 minutes into the stream, we will do the giveaway. That'll okay. give, give everybody enough time. Uh, I, I've been sitting here kicking the list up, adding to it, doing, doing that. Okay, I believe you. I don't think you're in there eating bonbons. No, <laughs> <laughs> so you probably could accomplish the same thing with uh, thin strips of clay. All right. All right, so because I'm already an hour in, even with all my cooking showing. All right, so what I would do is I would fill in. Oh, let me do a couple more. Let me see how quickly I can get this done. So this is kind of just like inlay. Now, now I yes. mixed the kind of clay because I was busy. Is that translucent mix or white? No, no. This is um, this is pearl, primo. Okay. Accents pearl clay. And what you can't get with the clay scraper, you can just come in and use your your scalpel. And, you know, you want an ear on the side of uh, overfilling, not, not underfilling. So I'll finish filling this one up so I can show you um, how I get some effects in it. Teresa Salgado just came in and said hello. Hello, Teresa. Hmm. I'm going to, um, next week I'm going to be demonstrating uh, some of Teresa's products. Another way to make blends. So again, I might have to just go in here and take some of that off with my blade. Yeah, Julie, the, the, the smooth set of that is my favorite clay picker-upper when I'm making blends for mud. I, like, I get She lets me play with mud, so. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, Mish just mentioned that Teresa came into the channel, and I uh, just wanted you guys to know that she also does lives, uh, crafting live with Pandora and Elena on Facebook. And I'm pretty sure it's usually at um, 2 p.m. on Saturdays. So I know, I know this is a little bit like watching paint dry. But I just want to finish it. One, because I want to bake it after stream. <laughs> and two, because I do want to show you how I get some effects. So you can see I'm just, uh, it's oh, not, I um, I bet Julie, I grew up in Santa Barbara during, during the seventies. I was in Santa Barbara during the 69 riots. And he walked four miles uphill. To no, no, I was, uh, I, was, I was a people boy in IV. It was really interesting avoiding the tanks and tear gas. <laughs> My favorite part of it is the rioters burnt down a Bank of America and they rebuilt it like Fort Knox and nobody <laughs> would bank there. So it turned into a video arcade. 
Now when you get down here to these little holes, you can just, you know, put a strip of clay in there. And you do want to push it down. This is the hardest part to sand, too, when it comes to sanding. So now, the thing you're scraping against, not the white, that's already baked, right? Yes. Okay. I didn't know if this was surgical hands or something like that. <laughs> no, not that good. And down here where these little holes are, I would strongly suggest that you, that's really overfilled. Because if they're going to pop out, that's usually where they pop out from. shouldn't go toward my fingers like that. Thank you, Jan. Those really help us out. Also, if you like the stream and you want to help us out in a more material way, <laughs> on the Facebook, there's a buy us a cup of coffee. And that, that, no, I, no, no, I, I no, like no. Coffee. You're saying the wrong thing. <laughs> no, not Facebook, YouTube. Forgive me. I'm in the wrong place today. On the about page. All right. So now, and you would fill the shallow one just the same way, right? Just the same way you'd fill it. There, there's, there's really no difference. Clay boogers. I got a lot of clay boogers. Now, to get this pattern in here, this mica shift pattern, um, this one or this one, um, what you can do is take a ball tool and just poke in there. And that's how you get this pattern. And I, I like that pattern. It's it's pretty cool. Um, it is difficult to sand that flat because <laughs> you're not, you're not going to do a uh, regular mica shift where you put an impression in and then you shave some of it off. Um, you, it's just too hard to do that on this. Um, so you can just poke in with a ball tool and later on when you sand, um, you'll get that mica shift. Um, and that's a cool one. I like that one. But this is, um, a texture sheet and this one, um, happens to be from, uh, Leela Beadler. Um, I'm using this one because uh, I just like the pattern in it. Um, for those of you, I want to make sure I'm saying this right, Jan, so correct me if I'm wrong. For uh, those of you who purchased the mini uh, blend angle set with the two smaller triangles, um, Jan, um, if you mention me, just mention Cynthia, um, and Jan will include um, a cool texture sheet that he has. And so what you want to do is you want to go to his Blend Angles page or his Facebook page and message him. And uh, you uh, have to give him your email address. And, um, well, he'll help you out if you message him. <laughs> but he does need your email address so he can send you a, um, like an invoice, a PayPal invoice. So I think that's all right. But so... I'm just going to press it in there. And you could use any texture sheet you have. I bet you you could use um, like coarse sandpaper. Oh, that's how you got the bumpy bits in. You know, I, yeah. I miss all of this because you were hiding away in your cave. And I'm hiding I know. away in my cave. Mish, Mish missed me this week. I, I really got into this project this week. All right, and then, you know, like I said, the more you kind of clean it up, <laughs> the the better off you are, right? And then once again, you have to get this back in the oven, right? You have to cure it. And now we come to the really fun part. And so again, if you were doing a more shallow one, 
you would fill it in the same way. And I do, even though there's texture here that's going to pop through, I did still texture the white clay. I did still use the texture sponge. Um, and that really, you know, pushes the clay into all these nooks and crannies like Thomas's English muffins. All right, so even though we're going to sand a, a good deal of that off to make that this kind of a an effect. That is how I did it. You know, I just cut the shapes out, put it in there, and then I, you know, took out took off as much clay as I possibly could, used the texture sponge to really really push it in there. And then um, you know, later on when I sanded, some of the color will show through. So that's how I did that. All right, how am I doing, Mishi? We're sitting at an hour and eight minutes, and I'm cut and pasting names into the treasure chest. <laughs> so now, most of the time when I sand things, I I put a good deal of um, time into finishing things as much as possible. Uh, prior to putting them in the oven because again it doesn't get any prettier in the oven if it's a big lump or something it's going to still be there when it comes out of the oven but you know this so I, you know I can usually start at 400 or even 600 grit but for this project I did something pretty unusual for me um, I started with a 240 grit sanding block and that's because, it, you know, and you don't have to do that. You could start at 400. It's just going to take you a lot longer. So um, I say this all the time. I'm a production worker. I'm used to doing, um, you know, uh, pieces for shows and stuff like that. So we need to um, get, you know, a lot of them done pretty quickly. It's actually a lot of work to do shows. So, and, and of course, um, you know, always with polymer clay, you should wet sand. You know, wet sanding is a, a good idea. So what I'm going to do is um, I have a little bucket of water next to me here. And um, I, I think I add more soap than most people. Um, but what I'm going to do is, is put a little piece of tape on the back here. Um, because if you try to sand like this, you know, holding just holding the sides of your piece, you gotta sand off your fingertips. <laughs> Ask me how I know. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and get this wet. And and actually this sanding sponge is a little bit wet. So and then I can use this piece of tape. Actually it's not working out that good. And I'm going in a circle. Because that's how you get, um, or you can go in a figure eight. And that's supposed to help you sand more evenly. So see, it's starting to sand off there. And um, oh, my tape isn't sticking. My tape isn't sticking, of course. So I go in a circle or a figure eight. And I don't press really hard. Um, I'm going to let the sandpaper do the work. All right, I'm not, I'm going to switch to this one because it's the thicker one. Because I don't want to sand my fingertips off. So uh, Linda Joy Poy loves production work. She's an old cannery worker and, and cooked on the North Slope. Production is great. I love it. <laughs> And Cher Mint says, you're very relaxing. She actually is. I mean, that's one of the benefits I get is I get, you know, I'm a real mellow kind of surfer guy. I don't usually even get angry. You could do it. You but, could do it this, this way, too. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and Deborah Gabriel says, I will now be using tape. Thanks. Yeah, don't, you know, scotch tape works better. I couldn't find the scotch tape. Because this is what happens every stream day. Where's the scotch tape? <laughs> Where's this? Where's that? Um, but you can also, you know, hold the sanding block like like this and do some sanding that way. Um, and I, go ahead. 
No, no, I was just going to say, folks, you know, we have checklists. Two hours before we stream, we go through this 15, 20 item list. Do we have this? Is all the tools set up? And it never fails. Five minutes between the, between the stream, it's an oh my God moment. Where is it? We got to get it. I can. Okay, so again, if, if I hold it in my hand, uh, uh, and bl blocks are cool um, because. Uh, let me see if I have. So, you know, rather than holding a little piece of sandpaper like this or, you know, trying to get the edge like this, um, the block is a, a bit more ergonomic. Um, and I like blocks or, I, or I'll wrap... Um, regular automotive uh, wet dry sandpaper around a block you know because it makes it easy to get into these little little grooves and stuff like that so if you don't have one of these blocks you know you can just tape a piece of um, you know the automotive sandpaper you can just tape it down on the table and again I would use I had this tape it didn't work out well this is painters tape um, packing tape um, or scotch tape works pretty good to you know give you something to hold on to so you can sand without sanding all your fingertips off all right so, so, so with so, these so, I hold on. Go ahead. so Linda Joe Poy has actually I think the $64 question what are these going to be so I really I, I mentioned earlier today and I should have kept mentioning it I really just wanted to show people the technique <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, and I knew that was going to take more than 90 minutes, but probably what I'm going to do with all of these is put a back on them and then you can make them into pendants or I thought they'd make kind of cool keychains. Let me see the one that I drilled. You could make pins out of them. Um, if you make some of the smaller ones, they're certainly great for earrings. Um... You know, this guy here, after I finish sanding and polishing, I'm, again, I'm probably going to put it back on it and then polish it up again. But I thought it would make a nice key ring. It's really thick. This one's really, really thick. So with these ones, I do. I start with 240. And then from 240, I go to 400. And this is a little uh, block that comes with, uh, these micro micro mesh sanding discs and so um, again I would put it right on the block and then you can wet sand it just like that you know or with the piece of tape oh, the, oh, and I've seen Jan do the piece of tape thing too or you can wrap wrap your sandpaper around around a block and then you can get in in these areas here and get the side done Linda, they'd make great zipper pulls on luggage oh yeah zipper and pull. you know yeah. what as big as I am that's an okay zipper pull for me <laughs> and then after um, after 400 grit and this is just, you know, my way of doing things. After 400 grit, I switch over to these micro mesh. And, you know, if you take your time in the first grit and really, really make sure you've got, you know, everything even um, and everything all cleaned up, then the rest of the grits are really just a, a few minutes. Um, and so I use these just the same way that I use, um, you know, regular sandpaper is <laughs> you can just do that and then you can wrap it around the block. So it's just a, it's just a little bit more um, ergonomic if you um, wrap your sandpaper around the block. What are you giggling at over there, old man? Oh, uh, Mary Joy is saying that Jess's mom won't let me sell her anymore of her, of her stuff. <laughs> uh, 
And I would go all the way through to, let's see, this first micro mesh is supposed to be um, equal to four or 500 grit, but I, I don't think that it is. And I don't think that it is. I, I It seems like it's more like 800 grit, 1800, 2400, 36, 4000, 6000. But by the time you get to these, you know, it's it's a, it's just really, really quick, right? But if you haven't done your first uh, grit correctly, um, you can run into some problems. Uh, let's see. I don't know if you can see this. People try to tell me that this happens from the buffing wheel, but um, I, had, I haven't used a buffing wheel on this. And when I was all, you know, all done, when I had sanded all the way up to this, 12,000 uh, micron sanding stuff. <laughs> I could, I found all these little pits and little teeny tiny cracks. And so that tells me that maybe I hadn't sanded it as well as I thought, or, you know, just I didn't check it as well between grits or something. Um, and I've had that happen to me on other pieces, not not just pieces like this, you know, mica shift pieces. So it's, you know, it's already pretty shiny by the time you get to that grip, but then, you know, there's all these little pits. So what I do actually when that happens is um, I take little teeny tiny pieces of translucent clay and I push it. I, I It's more backfilling. That's all, that's all it is. And I push it into those little pits and then cure it again, and then sand it again. But generally, it's um, it's not as much sanding. You know, I I I wouldn't start at 240 after I cured it again. I would start at um, 400, about 400. Okay, so then, so, go Cindy, ahead. We we are sitting at an hour and 19 minutes. All right, so I'm almost done. Okay. <laughs> So, and then the final step is buffing. And these days, the only thing that I buff with is flannel. So you're so, a convert. I'm a <laughs> so I do use a wheel. I do use a wheel. I actually use something called a jewel tool. Um, the Jewel Tool is a great tool. It's a wonderful tool, but it's extremely expensive. And I don't really use it with polymer clay that much. I use it with metal. But I do use it to buff polymer clay. And so uh, Ken Epperly, um, who's a great guy, um, he wrote a free book. It's on um, tinypandora.com. It, she's got a section there called Free PDFs for All. And... Um, he and Bella Giovanni wrote a, a book about uh, using a tumbler to uh, polish polymer clay. And in that book, he talked about uh, a flannel buffing wheel. Um, but he's got like a big bench grinder. So I think it's a, like an 8-inch or a 6-inch uh, wheel that he has. Um, so I looked around um, for my jewel tool. You know, I, I need a, like a 3-inch wheel. Um and I found this flannel, it's a it's a set of two flannel buffing wheels. Flannel, not not cotton, not not felt. Um, and it comes with these adapters so that you can put it right on a hand drill if you want to. Um, so it's a pretty inexpensive way of getting yourself a buffing wheel. <laughs> you just just gonna borrow the drill, honey, and you know, put that together and um, it it won't burn them and it shines them up just beautifully so while Misha's finishing up I'm actually ready when you are okay I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and, and buff one of these up while you're doing while you're doing that I'm all smashed in here All 
right. So I'm going to bring up the giveaway tool. Yeah. I found, I found this today. It's kind of cute. So you can see that after just a few minutes, I, got, I have that much shine. But if I kept doing it, it gets shiny oh, and shiny. Can you put it back up there? I had you covered up with the treasure. Oh, okay. Okay, so, you know, it shines them up beautifully. This is one I completely buffed up. It just shines them up beautifully. So a nice glass-like finish. And it doesn't burn or cause scratches or, you know, some, <laughs> like, never use felt. But flannel, flannel is good. Felt will burn your piece. Okay, let's do the giveaways. So what are we giving away? Are we giving away Jan first? You tell me who you want to give away from, and all I'm doing is pushing a button. Okay. So Jan very generously offered to donate the mini blend angles set. You saw the beautiful, beautiful work I did with it. Um, and so that's what we'll do first. All right. So Pick a name, the... Mishi. <laughs> So the first name is Irina Golovskovsky. Now that I've completely bastardized that <laughs> name. <laughs> well, why don't you copy and paste that name someplace so that we can get Jan and I will drop it in I will drop it in chat for Jan. And I think the best thing probably to do is Jan send her a tell or Irina send Jan a tell. And you can swap DNA. <laughs> now, am I pulling one for Mary? Well, congr and congratulations, you are by the way. Congratulate. And, but before we do Mary, I just want to um, I just want to say that Jan has also been generous enough to um, offer this mini set um, with a free texture sponge. You know, I know those texture sponges are hard for people to get now. Um, and so, um, if you mention, if you ordered these and you mentioned my name, the mini, for the mini set, um, he'll include a free texture sponge. Very, very, um, generous of him. All right. Now, um, I, now Mary Jo, I think there's a, a couple of different, um, sets like this that, um, you're offering. Um, but you know, these are the ones that we use tonight. So, all right. Whenever you're ready, Mishi. I gotta find my app. It's hiding. There it is. <laughs> I'm not hearing the music. Can they hear the music? No, I turned the music off because I didn't want to run that to the. No, it was complicated. <laughs> so Judy to Sierra is is the winner for Mary. Wonderful. Congratulations. Now, also, Mary Jo, for the rest of... Um, oh, I should mention the texture sponge thing is only until May 31st. We can't ask Jan to be generous like that forever. Um, but also, uh, Mary Jo is um, using a coupon code until May 31st, and that is Cool Cuts, and you'll get 10% off um, a, a cutter, you know, the three... The three-piece cutter sets, the pendant and earring sets. So, congratulations. <laughs> All right. Does anybody have any questions be before we wrap it up tonight? It's going to be pretty. As usual, we have our own tutorials out there. Uh, we have the one with the beautiful picture you see in the bottom of the screen now. That is uh, ten dollars. Is it ten ten dollars till the end of the month? Is that silk screens, stencils, and stamps? Uh, yep. Yep. So you use code May twenty, and you can. Um, that's the um, uh, the the covered container and the little um, starfish. Pendant. Um, it's uh, video and PDFs, and uh, you get all that for ten dollars to the end of May. We also have up for sale that's that is a that folks have just absolutely loved, which is our subtle metallics video that is running at twenty dollars. And that, and that also add. has a no foot spring. Yeah. Well, that also has a bonus project of um, those earrings, the little bubble earrings. 
And one we're, that we've noticed folks are really enjoying right now is actually, okay, sweetie, I forgot his name. Tell me what it is. It's <laughs> go with the <laughs> it's go with the flow fluid art techniques with polymer clay paint. So basically, what it is is it's a tutorial. Um, at the time, I think I was the only one doing it, um, where um, I use um, polymer clay paint to um, mimic uh, paint pouring techniques. And so there's two methods for making your own polymer clay paint in there. And then I think I showed four different um, swipe ways to swipe it. And then I put one bonus swipe in there for you too. So I think in, I think all together it's five swipes, um, five different kinds of swipes. It's um, one of the more messy things I do, but it's a whole lot of fun. <laughs> so... So check those out. Head on over says, to our online school. That's the one she's buying. It's a fun one. It's a fun one. And, and, and one of these days, we'll clip some of the footage when we did paint pours live one day. It was <laughs> yeah. an absolute catastrophe, but a blast. Folks, it's so, that time. Go for it, sweetie. Oh, so I was just going to say, so for that Go With The Flow one, that was the first tutorial I made for the Thinkific School. And that one doesn't have a PDF, but you don't need it. You don't need a PDF for that one. Once you, once you see the techniques, you'll you'll get it. You won't have to bring anything to the studio with you. So and like with, with thank you, of, thank you, thank you. Yep, and folks, be kind, be a solution, and have a great time. If we don't see you again Friday, we'll be on Facebook at 2. Um, we'll see you again next week. Have a blast. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you so much for coming.